What is up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Ryan Myers Expeditions. Out here again today on my buddy Ben's boat. We got our friend Jason here with us diving today. He has a YouTube channel, Hawaii Hamas. I'll put that link right here, up here, I don't know, around here somewhere. We're out here looking for Onos today. I'm driving the boat first and I gotta kinda give you guys some backstory on just, just a life update. It has been the weirdest winter of my entire life. Like normally I spend a lot of winters out here in Hawaii hiding from, you know, the, the Arctic conditions in Florida and all the usual rough water that you get all over the kind of the world. This winter, I don't know what it was, but I had these crazy sinus problems. The weather was bad, the boat's broken. I just had like, I just had a lot of weird problems that just did not dive near as much as I, I usually do. So that's why you guys are getting a lot of those short videos, a lot of those throwbacks. But guys, I went totally sober to fix my sinuses. I am healed, I am better, I am back, better than ever. And I have some new equipment. I know I showed you guys a little bit briefly in one of those older videos, but I just never got a chance to like, fully vet it and fully use it. And I don't like to, to necessarily share stuff with you guys unless I've used it plenty. And I'd like to also announce that I've, I'm part of a new team, American Dive Company. I've known the guys over there, Petros, for a long time and I finally decided to pull the trigger, made the switch, stoked to get over there and use a lot of, a lot of really, really good equipment that he kind of brings in from all over the world. One of those guns is the Pathos Roller. Today I'm shooting the 95 Enclosed Track Sniper. This thing's got a kicker band on it and is super powerful and well balanced in the water. I usually only use a single wrap on my smaller guns, but I think this one will warrant a double. I've also got some new suits here, guys. I'm stoked to be rocking the Polo Sub Custom Suits from American Dive Co. Check these things out. Just beautiful. Come measured to your body. Got my name on the back. This will be my competition suit. This is a competition year. Hopefully we got a big national championship coming up. We've got a world championship coming up. So this is it. I'm back in the game. I'm training hard. Got some new fins too, but like I said, it has been the weirdest winter ever. I jumped in way down south. I get totally rolled in the water. Actually, it was my second time ever taking my brand new Setmas in the water and I got destroyed coming out and actually lost a fin. Probably the first fin, the first piece of gear I've ever lost just getting rocked. And of course, it was like a brand new Setma. So if you see that thing and you're diving down south, let me know. It's blue, it's mine, I'd like it back. But sorry, Petros. I've got some new merch going on too, guys. This is like our, this is our third attempt, our third different company, our third different design. Just not, it's getting closer and closer for sure. We're getting better and better. But I wanna make sure that whatever I offer to you guys is something that, that I love and I wanna wear every single day. And I wanna see you guys out when I see all of you guys at Walmart and Safeway every day that you guys are wearing something that, that I can be proud to see on you guys. So we're gonna keep working on those. They're gonna keep evolving and then we'll get them out to you. Also, we've got a Roy tournament coming up, guys. That's gonna be a local Big Island online tournament. I'll put that link down below. Cool motivation to kind of get out there and destroy some of these Roy. I've been promising you guys a Roy video forever and I promise it's coming now. Comment down below how many Roy you think that I can kill. I think it's like they do week long intervals for a month, all online, all virtual tournament. How many Roy do you think that I can kill in one week? Guys, let me know down below. Like this video before we get started. You know it's gonna be sick. And then we'll see you guys in the water. Guys, Ben just threw the pipe. You know what that means, Ono came up. We're out here in like 220 feet of water, drifting one of these points and What's, what's really cool is this time of year, you start to really see these Onos coming into these kind of little compression points or whatever. I got this damn C-130 flying all over me. But guys, this could be it. This could be that Ono right now. So I was exactly right there all the way from the boat. I saw that throw flasher fly and I knew Ono was there. And this is the Jason cam right here. Unfortunately, didn't quite get close enough to get the shot that he needed on this particular fish. So one of my first few drops of the day put me in about 30 meters out here and when I'm diving deep like this and I have a flasher, I like to use it as kind of a line. You know, as like if you're out there line diving, you use that flasher to kind of keep yourself going straight up and straight down and it gives you like a really nice reference point to your speed. It's just a really nice addition and makes it a little bit easier to dive deeper. And then once I get past that flasher, I'm cruising down into sink mode, drifting all the way down to the bottom and looking around and doing my gentle spins to try and see where I want to land. 
On this dive, obviously, I'm looking off of the ledge into those boulders, and I know that I'm gonna land out there in some kind of relaxed, in the most comfortable spot I can find, which right here is right next to that boulder with that little bit of gravel that just kind of makes it a little bit more comfortable to lay and then stay there and wait and kind of look offshore into the deeper side and see what appears. When I see something I like, I'll kind of take my gun, move it really, really slowly. I want you to pay attention, guys, to how slowly this gun moves because that's how the speed it needs to move to not spook all those tiny little fish. Luckily that moo came right in and I was able to put a perfect little shot in here with this little Pathos 95, but watch what happens right here. The shaft goes down, gets stuck in the rocks, and I yank on it right here. This is me yanking that thing out, which I do a lot out here in Hawaii. A lot of our coral that we're diving on is kind of dead and fragile, and a lot of times just a gentle tug will let my shaft free. Unfortunately, this tug right here bent this shaft and I didn't even know it, causing me to just, just so much hassle throughout the day. I got this new dive watch too from American Dive Co, the Boo Shot, and it's really kind of cool so you guys can see how deep I'm diving, how long I'm down there, how long I'm on the surface, and then how many dives I do. That's all the information right there on the screen right now. Shortly after that move, Ben was able to pick up an uku as well. Couple nice fish there. Ben, what happened? No, I had a beautiful uku come in at about 35 meters and put a shot right in the side, kind of just a little bit back from the gills, and. I ran and hung up on a rock and normally I use a slip tip, uh, but it, I had the double flopper and it tore off. So that was a big one though, huh? Yeah, 20, 22, something like that for sure. It's definitely a big fish. As an old kind of had the, he's beat up, you know, he was like, yeah. he was old, you know, he wasn't like, he wasn't a, a, a very pretty looking uku. He was yeah. an old rugged scarred up guy. Well, sick. That's what we're looking for today. Let's go find another one. So same area here in another deep dive. I think this one was like 38 meters. And again, you'll see that same technique where I've got the flasher there and I kind of just looking straight back at it to give me that frame of reference on how fast I'm going and making sure that I'm going straight up and straight down. Now, this is something that I do a lot out here that where, where I'm landing right now. I'm always looking for the boulders. And somebody commented on one of my last videos and told me they're like, the boulders are the older areas that are more eroded. And they're lower down. And that, that kind of made a lot of sense to me. Like that's, that's where most of that coral, that's where all those lighter rocks have kind of been blown away. All that, you know, lava rock, all the lava flows is gone. And now what's left is kind of these big giant boulders. And that's always what I'm looking for out here. That always seems to be where the fish are. So again, right here, I get down to the bottom. I'm looking to tuck up against something. You can see that I've got like on my left, those bigger rocks, those bigger boulders. And then on my right, I'm looking out over into the deep area. Now this was after Ben had already shot and lost that big uku. And I know that that's all that's on my mind. I'm like, man, you only usually get one of these shots a day. You only, you, as a group, you might see one uku every couple, and one big uku, one 10, 15, 20 pounder every couple trips. So. That's what I was thinking about out here, just out here looking off into the deep. I know that there are a lot here on this area, but I'm down there, I'm looking around really, really nice and slowly. You can see how slow those head movements are. I'm trying to make sure that I'm not scaring those little ones. Those small little black fish are what gives you away to those predators, you know? They come in, they're attracted to you, but then if you spook them, they're kind of like the first line of defense against some of these fish, you know, that, that's like a threat. So I had that move come in, I took a shot, and I'm gonna slow-mo this down for you guys so you can see the shaft width that happened. I don't know what was going on here with the bent shaft, but you can see how it comes out and it's real wonky there. It's kind of going all over the place, and I didn't think much of it on this dive. You know, I miss a lot of fish. It's not something that's uncommon for me to do, so I didn't even think twice about it. I, I came up, I took my shaft, I shoved it back in the gun, I, I was like, I missed, I don't know why, no worries, and moved on. So we're at our next spot here now, and again, this deeper area, 
and I still don't know that my shaft is bent. And and I know everybody all the time is always like, oh, my shaft was bent, my shaft was bent. You know, that's why I missed. And I wish I had footage of showing you guys like what this shaft looked like. These these stainless steel, I think this is like a stainless steel sta Sandvik or something shaft. They're just a little bit more fragile than what I'm used to. Those Rob Allen spring, shield, spring steel shafts, you can do anything to, and they just seem to kind of survive. But these these European style shafts are just just a little bit more precise, and uh, and they bend just a little bit easier than than kind of what I'm used to, and that's why when I ripped on it on those on that moo earlier, it just kind of bent it. So I still don't know that now, but I get down here to the bottom, I got that nice little sand channel there, just a little bit of of kind of cover, and I'm looking around and I see a freaking dinosaur. Now look at this uku here. I. I don't know how big he was. He, he was 10 plus for sure, probably somewhere between 10 and 15 pounds, but came right in. I did my lunge here. I didn't think I was going to be able to wait for another pass, and my shaft just went all over the place. I'll, I'll slow it down again for you guys. I want to blame this one on my shaft. I could be completely wrong. I could be nuts, but I, I think this one was my shaft. I'll slow it down a couple times for you guys and kind of see what, what I was looking at, but anyways, just completely devastated to, to see most days you only get one shot at a fish like this. And for me and Ben to have already had our shots and lost them was just kind of devastating. Ben was next up here with another stud moo. This was like that five, six pound class of moo that we're kind of like always looking for. You know, those two, three pounders we find all the time. But this one right here, this is a real trophy. So we got another deeper dive here now with that Pathos 95. And guys, I'm so excited to be joining this American Dive Co. team and be able to kind of broaden my horizons for gear a lot. You know, I've kind of been stuck in the same kind of rut for years since 2016 Greece World Championships. When I was in Greece, I adapted completely to the European mentality. I had all of my gear was made right there in Greece and I was, I was trying to match the hatch essentially, use what they use over there, use what my competition uses. And that's kind of what I got going on here again. It's another World Championship year and I just really want to find what's going to work best for me and what's that that's going to do for you guys is you're going to get to see me use and review a lot of different equipment from American Dive Co. These are guys are going to support me and in turn I hope to be able to share a lot of that stuff with you guys. And if you guys need any equipment at all, do me a favor, pick it up from American Dive Co. I'll put a link down below and I'll put a discount code down below for you guys too. That's one of the number one ways you guys can support me and support the companies that support me. So another dive here, get down to the bottom. You can see those Moana Collies obviously came right in. There's a couple of teeny tiny ukus. And when I see those small ukus, a lot of times I'm thinking big ukus. So that's what I was looking for. That's why I was like, I, I don't know about that Moana Collie. I've still got time down here. Let's wait and let's see if something a little bit better shows up. If not, I know those Moana Collies won't go anywhere too far, and I'll be able to take them at the end of my dive if nothing else presents itself. And that's pretty much exactly what happened. I'm down here on the bottom, I'm looking around, I'm looking to wait and see another one of those dinosaurs. This is that same spot that I was on before with that with that dinosaur uku, but nobody would show up. That was again a once in a freaking week, a day, a month fish, and I didn't get to see another one. But another fish for dinner here, this Moana Collie presented himself, another chance to shoot this 95 centimeter down straight into the coral, but managed to land the, another delicious fish for dinner. Pretty much right after I shot that one, Ben went down and had one get wrapped up in the bottom. Now last time Ben went down to unwrap my fish from the bottom, he came back up with the fish and just cut the line and left the shaft down there. So that's what I told him I was going down to do now. I'm like, bro, I got a knife. I'll go down there. I'll, I'll get your I'll get your fish back. I'll just leave your shaft down there. But no, just kidding. He last time he he couldn't get it out of the rocks, whatever it was. But I'm on my way down to the bottom now, and this is one of those scenarios where you've definitely got to be a little bit more aware and a little bit safer, you know. That fish is down there thrashing around, which means sharks. You know, that's definitely something that attracts your bigger predators in. It's also something that could attract those ukus or those bigger predatory fish in as well, which is why you gotta kinda be on alert, go down there with the gun, look around. But when anything is attached to the bottom and then you're gonna go down there and you're gonna mess with it, you run the risk of entangling yourself with that line and therefore the bottom. And that's just a really, really bad situation to be in. And something that just anytime something is on the bottom, you're doing more work than you're used to. You're going down there, you're, you're fighting to get this fish out, you gotta untangle it, you gotta do more. And it's just time to kind of be extra careful, extra extra cautious about getting tangled up. This was a stud Moana Collie. Luckily it wasn't tangled up too bad. I was able to go down there and just kind of untangle it from the coral and then 
Ben was on the surface ready to pull it right back up. That's why it disappeared because he's there waiting to feel me untangle it and then he's able to pull it up himself. Now, I was already down there on the bottom and there's beautiful Moana Collies come in and you guys know how much I love these. I couldn't help myself and took another Moana Collie for dinner. Step two, if you wanna do another one or if, uh, or get out of here. Yeah, yeah, do one more. So poor Jason was diving with us today, and I don't know what happened, but in the first like hour of the day, he Ooh. lost a fin. It flew out the back of the boat, no idea, but we pretty much used him just to drive all day, and then at the end of the day, Ben was like, yo, take my fins, I think they'll fit you. And so this was like, I did a couple dives with Jason here at the end. I was kind of over it. I dove all day. We're planning on diving again the next day. And I had literally just said, I was like, yo, let's go. I'm done. He was like, one more, one more. And this is proof that the fish will always bite on the last cast. You will always find that monster on the last dive of the day. And that's exactly what happened here. He gets down to the bottom. He's looking around. And I don't know, he's got his camera just angled a little bit up so you can't quite see the fish completely come in. But he does those grunts, he does those scratching, and this monster comes over and he's able to put a perfect shot right through the side of this thing's face and get, I think this was definitely his biggest uku, but just so unbelievably pumped right here for this guy. It was a blast diving with him, a true joy to go out here and dive 40 meters with somebody all day long. What a cool freaking dive there. I saw an absolute monster. I clipped, lost it, cried all day about it. Ben nicked one even bigger. You said yours could eat in this one, eh? Bro, mine was like this big and I was pumped. And then Jason, the Hawaii hammer, at the end of the freaking day. Look at this thing. Oh, my drop, guys. my drop. What happened? Tell us what happened. Uh, it, was, uh, it was like a last drop of the day. And we're coming in and. Uh, I decided to take one more and I just saw this guy at 100. The dude loses his fin, flies off the back of the boat, never seen it before. He's like, he's sitting on the boat, bummed all day, sad. And then oh, Ben- Oh, yeah, Uncle Speedo sponsored you. Yeah, oh, ben, is like, ben is like, yo, <laughs> take my fins, jump in, one one drop. Did, did two, three drops. I was like, let's go. And then he's like, one more. Drops to the bottom, finds this thing. Yeah. What a freaking day. The day's catch right there. The stud of the day by far. Ben, that Moana Collie that was tied up. My two baby Moana Collies. What I thought was a nice moo until until he got that moo. What a stud of a moo there, bro. What a sick day. What are we doing? Are we doing this again tomorrow? Yes, sir. Well, we'll be back out here again tomorrow. So we went out the next day and it was just a complete bust, except for this one experience right here. I don't know if this humpback was attracted to the chum or what it was, but he came right through our chum slick right when I was diving down. And it was just an unbelievable encounter with one of the coolest animals that we have out here in Hawaii. So I'd actually been trying to make this video for a while and like I told you guys at the beginning of the video, I just had the strangest winter run of diving. You know, I, I still got out there a lot, I was doing a lot of fishing, I was doing a lot of hunting, but my diving was just off and the weather was bad, it was just it was just a weird, weird winter. So I never got to complete this video, but a couple of these clips are from earlier for this same gun when I was testing it. This is actually, I think, my first or second fish ever with this gun. But you can see here is a perfect example of finding a hiding place for those ukus. I see that ledge, and I wanna tuck down up against that ledge in the shadow, and then do my dusting, do my grunting, and coax whatever I see around over to me. And that uku right there sitting above that big rock off in the distance, that was my target. I get down there, I can see him, and I just need to be non-threatening enough to get him to come to me, while also being enticing enough to think that I might be food, or I might have food, or I might be eating something that he can get a scrap from, and that's the whole entire purpose out here. And he works perfectly, he plays into this perfectly, he's out there, he's curious, I'm non-threatening enough, 
You can see that kind of dust kicking up a little bit. That's my hand just patting down the dust to try and try and entice him over. And it's a little bit longer dive, but you can see how slow I'm moving and how non-threatening that gun is. And I want to wait until that thing comes close enough that I can get the shot with this relatively small gun. You know, I don't do a lot of hunting with a 95, but I needed this fish to come close. And he came close enough and I was able to launch off, get that shot, and land definitely my favorite eating fish out here in Hawaii. We turned this one into Chick-fil-A Uku at home, me and Sam. And again here, one last clip of this 95 centimeter pathos as I'm testing this thing out. And I'm really, truly impressed with this thing. What What's kind of incredible about these European style guns is how well balanced they all are. You know, here at the American guns, the, the South African guns, even some of the New Zealand stuff that I've used, the, the standard pipe gun style gun, just seems to be less they, the manufacturer seems to care a little bit less about how it's balanced in the water. And what I mean by that is where that gun sits, floats, balances, moves forward. If you, if you drop it out of your hand, that thing just floats just very, very gently, straight perpendicular, straight parallel with the bottom, straight down. Whereas my Rob Allen, it's got a really heavy muzzle. That thing is always falling down in front of me. And because of that, you have to use a lot more muscle to hold that thing up. It just... A different style of gun and this pathos has been just a just a dream to shoot you know I'm still getting used to it for sure but hunting in Hawaii is so much like hunting in the Mediterranean and a lot of the same gun characteristics work really really well out here so this is just a set of boulders here another mo beautiful Moana Kali that comes in again I'm waiting I'm waiting I'm taking my time waiting to get the kind of perfect shot on this fish this was a relatively shallow dive and I knew I had plenty of time down there again those boulders are always what I'm looking for you can see you'll see it over and over and over in my videos if I'm shooting fish it's because I'm on these boulders and when any of you guys out here in Hawaii can go out there look for those bouldery spots and I bet you will have the same success that I do Are you ready for me to kill a deer? Venison. It was absolutely incredible. It's time to go get a deer. Oh my god. It's really good. It's spicy. It's fish curry. I love it. It's really good. Alright guys. First bite of Kyoki's Moo. Curry. That is incredible. That is some kind of, I don't even know how many things he put in this thing. That's a green curry? Yeah. Sam, you need to learn how to make this. This is incredible, guys. It's really it's freaking incredible. Sometimes I tell you, just tell you guys it's incredible, but this is freaking amazing. Guys, really, really cool day of diving there. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. We'll see you next time right here on Ryan Myers Expeditions.